Welcome back. This is the top 25 ColecoVision games. If you like this video, please support this channel and do me the honor of subscribing. Ring that bell for notifications and share, share, share. To kick things off, let's have a recap on the Coleco Video board. game systems have come a long way from simple beginnings to games that simply lost their challenge. Then the advanced intelligence of CBS ColecoVision materialized. It's got better graphic definition, just like arcade games. It's got more changing screens, more to challenge any game wizard. You can add on modules to expand the system into an 80K computer and more. It's the most powerful video game system available. CBS ColecoVision. Personally, I couldn't give a flying anorak about the specs. How does it play games? I really like this game, but Rogers. There's lots of stages, lots of enemy sprites and variety. You fly through various trenches, various planet surfaces, and there's a big massive boss awaiting you at the end. But I've noticed it comes in for quite a bit of negativity, especially in regards to weak sound. But I thoroughly enjoyed playing this one, so I'm not sure what all the fuss is about. This one is absolutely brilliant. It just has that one more go and pick up and play quality about it. It runs really fast and as you can see is quite smooth. Risk takers will love it. You'll have loads of accidents and it's a lovely little arcade racy experience. I'd say it's easy to get into but difficult to master but definitely still fun for the whole family and feels light years ahead of the VCS version. In 2021, it still entertains. This console is basically the arcade in your home. How on earth was this ColecoVision, not the Sony PlayStation of its day? On paper, and from what I've seen with my own eyes, this console is definitely more powerful than the other competitive consoles of the day. I mean, this is a fantastic little arcade port. There's no flickering on the sprites. Animation looks good. I feel like I missed out. I'd have loved to have owned this console in the games back in the day. Well, if you don't enjoy Centipede in one form or another, surely gaming is not for you, especially retro gaming. You couldn't wish for a better arcade port than this. I mean, when did this come out? 1983? I've played lots of different uh, ports of this and I'm pretty sure this is the best. One of the things as well is how crisp everything looks and how smoothly everything zips along. And can you believe Atari put this on the ColecoVision? Proper heads gone moment. Another rock solid arcade conversion to the Coleco and it's from Atari again. Look at that large uh, mushroom explosion. Did you see that? Fantastic. I like this more than the arcade version as well because it's a little bit easier. I've only recently discovered the ColecoVision but I'm absolutely bowled over by the quality of the arcade conversions. So this is a massive discovery for me and I'm definitely going to pick up one of these consoles. For me nothing beats the Amstrad CPC arcade conversion for Donkey Kong and Retro Gamer confirmed that recently but I had to include this in the list because it plays absolutely brilliantly. What's really special about this version is it was released in 1982 and when you consider that this really is and it should be considered a work of art. Controls can feel a bit weird and the conveyor belt screen is missing but apart from that it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, apparently there's a super version of this as well. This would probably be my number one game if it wasn't for the fact that the one of the levels is missing from the arcade original. But again, this was released in 1983. 
but when you just look at those visuals, I mean, it just craps all over the Atari 2600 VCS. There's the cute little animation on the sprite as well. And the collision detection is so good, so close to the arcade, that if you do lose a life, it's down to you, it's your fault. Really is fantastic stuff. I'm completely gutted I didn't have this back in the day. I played this originally on the Atari 2600 VCS, and I really liked it, it's a really good game. I remember as a kid I was able to get quite far in this game, but uh, I just don't have that speed and agility anymore at 46 to progress the way I used to. It's the same as the VCS version, it's got 10 skill levels. From memory it looks just as good, probably better. I can imagine the difficulty would put most people off this one, but although it's tough, the controls are so accurate, it's brilliant honestly. This is near identical to the arcade original. In fact, if you played and liked uh, Berserk, you'll, you'll be right at home with this one as well. This one was released in 19, early 1984. It's a lovely little arcade shooter and that's why it makes the list. Highly accurate with tight controls. I'm not sure if this is where they've got the idea for Gauntlet and games like Smash TV. I just remember playing those and thinking, hey, this is very similar to Berserk and uh, Frenzy. Smashing game. I know what you're thinking. What the bloody hell is he doing? This should be a lot higher. And it probably should be. This is a massively faithful port of the arcade original. If it's in the arcade, it's here too. The controls are an absolute dream. And I'm still humming that tune even when I go to bed. If you think about the time this was released, 1983, this is definitely the best home version. There's also a big homebrew community for the ColecoVision, so a lot of these games have been enhanced as well. Oh my god, could you imagine playing something like this back in 1984? It's, it's arcade perfect, it's, it's even as quick as the arcade original. In fact, I'd wager that this is better than the arcade original. The sound effects are just brilliant. I feel like I'm in a war zone. And it's another game that Atari put on the ColecoVision. Talk about mental. If you owned this console back in the day, you were amazing. You probably just didn't know it. Okay, alright, this is getting ridiculous now. The joke's over. So it's missing the Galaxian stage. But apart from that, this is another amazing, excellent arcade port. The sound is strong, sounds authentic. The sprites look amazing. It just captures the arcade original. And the collision detection is absolutely spot on. Not one thing's been overlooked and the controls are really tight as well. I'm seriously hoping I can pick up one of these consoles and a load of games dirt cheap on eBay. Jesus Christ on a bike, another must have. I love playing this one in the arcade uh, and Tempest as well. It's definitely not the best looking port I've played, but I think it's the fastest. The retro vibe is strong with this one, and they've really nailed the control system. Probably the only thing that lets this one down is uh, there's no options screen. But apart from that, it's definitely a fun game, and one you'll keep coming back to. It really is a perfect game to own and play. Sticking around, poking a stick at this console, it really has been uh, love at first sight. I'm starting to think that this is the perfect console for people that want to collect. What's clear is that this is several notches above the com competition at the time. This one doesn't look brilliant, but the action is frantic. There's 12 stages, and from what I can tell so far, it's a must for the console. It's definitely up there with any other sort of platform game I've played. So yeah, it's that good. I'll be honest with you, when I first loaded Ladybug up, I wasn't that impressed. I'm not a fan of the choice of colour palette. Not very vibrant. But from a playability perspective, with the tight, accurate controls, it's about as accurate a port that you could ever hope for from an arcade game. It's not fair or right to call this just another Pac-Man clone. It's got its own place and its own charm. 
and it's exciting and there's lots of fun to be had here. If you've got kids as well, they'd absolutely love this. So I had the Amstrad CPC as a kid and there was a game on there called Oh Mummy and I think it was by a company called Gem Software. So when I played this, I was like, oh my God, it's Oh Mummy, it's Oh Mummy. Where the reality is, Pepper 2 came before it. So I've got an instant addiction to this game because I feel like I've been there, done it and played it before. Call it nostalgia if you like. It also reminds me of Konami's Amadar. And it's another fantastic arcade port. The ColecoVision knows no bounds. Finally, a racing game. I originally played Pit Stop or Pit Stop 2 on the Commodore 64. And that's one of the better games uh, on the 64. Probably would make any top 20 or top 10 list. The pit stops in, these, uh, in this game takes uh, some strategy. Some of the races are long and drawn out and there's a lack of scenery. And although I've seen that this game has been criticised, um, I quite like it and it's got good arcade appeal. I'd like to own this as well because it comes with steering wheel support. Another absolute blinder from 1983. For me, it's pretty much arcade perfect which seems to be the norm for this console. The gameplay is excellent. I love the quirkiness. It has just that right level of complexity. And again, highly recommended, makes my top 10. Cuba is yet more proof that the simple ideas are the best. Another superior game to the Atari 2600 VCS. This port is still highly playable. It's fast, smooth, and controls like a dream. The sprites are definitely more well-defined as well. You'll never get bored of it. It's a hectic blaster. It's one I've played on many systems, but I kid you not when I say this is the best version. Definitely one of the first games I'm going to pick up should I collect for this console, or should I say when. Now I've played Spy Hunter on lots of different systems. I originally had it on the Amstrad CPC. I played it on the ZX Spectrum. I played it on the Commodore 64. But I think this one takes the biscuit. The music will have your feet tapping and the sound effects are of a high quality. Apparently it supports the super action controller, but I'm not sure what that is. I'm just using standard controls. But this one really brings the arcade feel uh, to the console. Massively lucky if you own this back in 1984. So the graphics aren't anything special. The sound is decisively mediocre. But the game itself is such a joy. It's old school madness. My only gripe is that I wish the game was bigger. It's all over after four tombs. And it really does leave you wanting more. I'm sure you've all played it, but it makes my top 10. And it's one I can't recommend enough. I feel like ColecoVision owners had the jump on everybody else back in the day. The games are just amazing. I played the life out of this in the arcade, coin after coin. I even played the Commodore 64 version, which was brilliant as well. And this is surprisingly good. It's just as difficult as the Commodore 64 and the arcade version. It looks really nice, it moves really nice. The controls are responsive. Yes, it's a tough game and it requires skill. And it has its frustrating moments, but the good times outweigh the bad. And I can't recommend this one enough. Oh my, a game that's not an arcade conversion. You can't really compare it to anything. Probably Missile Command, but you've got to basically defend the United States of America from all sorts of nuclear missile attacks. You can't believe how fun this game is. Forget the crappy graphics, what's on display is more than adequate. Plus you'd be so desperate trying to fend off the other warheads and uh, enemy attacks that uh, honestly you won't have time for anything else but the gameplay. What an experience. This is another arcade conversion that absolutely blows away the VCS in regards to the graphics and the smoothness and the sound and the controls. This is really faithful to the arcade. And I think this game 
really shows how advanced the ColecoVision was compared to the competition. Zaxxon is pure arcade uh, shooting fun. I get that it's an acquired taste, but for me there's nothing else like it. Right then, here we go, drum roll, number one. Can you believe this was released in 1982 and you can only play it on the original hardware if you've got the steering wheel? But without question, this is the ColecoVision's most impressive game. The sense of speed is fantastic, the graphics something else, and look at the size of the buildings and those trees. This has to be the best port of Sega's amazing Turbo. And for me personally, of all the games I've played, this one steals the show. Until next time, bye!